you, Lord, that you usher us into a place of vision. You usher our spirit into a place of expectation. And God, we come today with expectation, not hoping, but believing, Father. Believing for that which is not seen with the natural eye. Believing for that which is not heard with the natural ear. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you for the hunger of our hearts, that God, you would stir it to another dimension. And you would pour out your spirit in us that, God, we would see, Father, in the realms of the spirit, things that are not seen in the natural but he heard. And, God, what you called us to hear is spirit caught and spirit fed. Yeah. So, God, we catch it today, everything you have to say. And we decree you are the mighty one. You are the great I am. Lord Jesus, you are our El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Nissi. You are Rapha. You're the lover of our soul. You are Yeshua. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I don't know whoever you can be seated if you can. Um, since I've seen the pastor, I think I've lost about 100 pounds. <laughs> I don't know if I was, when that was the last time I saw you, how many years ago. But um, what's amazing to me is that everything God does is by the Spirit. Amen. And that everything is a child of God. I can't understand people who go to church and don't understand the ways and the workings of the Holy Ghost. They don't know about the gifts of the Spirit. They don't know that God has a place for them, that there's an inheritance for them, that there's that God wants to do more in you than you. How many know you serve a supercalifragilisticexpialidocious God? Yeah. That he's the God, he's the God of the subtleties. But I have found that as I've traveled the world, a lot of times I bring my own music, but you all have phenomenal music. I heard it this morning. So I'm glad to say the pastor's with it. And hallelujah. It's always nice to find a pastor that's with it. But there's a scripture in the Word of God, and the scripture is in Proverbs 16, 3 and 9. And it says, commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. I mean, oh God determines your steps. I grew up in South Africa. I grew up in the bush of Africa. That's why I called him my African brother, because I didn't know I was white until I came to America. I honestly did it. I grew up in a world that people you have never seen. It was always out in the townships in the bush. My dad believed the smallest miracle was as great as the greatest miracle. My dad was a phenomenal man of God. His name was Robert Tom. He wrote a book called The New Wine is Better. He died in 1980. He was very instrumental in prophesying and <laughs> in decreeing over people's lives like the brown for revival, he prophesied that. John Kilpatrick told me. Benny Hinn told me he prophesied his ministry. I mean, I can tell you the Who's Who 700 Club, Pat Robinson, my dad, before Pat even had the 700 Club, my dad walked in and said, God's going to give you two angels, Angel 1 and Angel 2 with the satellites, they launched in the sky and they had 700 Club. You see, I grew up cutting my teeth on the supernatural. And when I came to America, it was a shock that you only heard about the supernatural if Catherine Kuhlman was in town or the latest heathen evangelists. You didn't even hear about prophets back then in the 70s, like you do today. My dad never said he was a prophet, but everybody I've met have said your dad was a prophet of God. He walked in like Agabus. Agabus was the one who heard Saul and Paul and said, you're getting ready to go to jail, you're going to Rome, and this is what's going to happen. So let me tell you something. It's not by who you are, it's whom you know. Amen. And so when I grew up in the anointing, I grew up seeing blind eyes open, deaf ears hear, I watched babies with club feet change in two seconds flat. I remember going into little places, the villages of South Africa, and all of the kids had ringworm, and my dad would just say, in the name of Jesus, and the ringworm would dissolve. And to me, that was amazing. That was amazing. And God just, something so minute. We're all like looking for the cancer to fall off. We're all looking for the blind eyes to open. And my dad would always say the littlest miracle was as great as the greatest miracle. There was no difference in the eyes of God. So I grew up in that world, and I came to America, and I went to Bible school here at 16 years old in Burlington, North Carolina. And uh, I would sit in the front seat of church in chapel. I would never sit in the back. I remember Donny Osmond was the flavor of the month for all the girls. And I didn't care about puppy love or anything else like that. I wanted Jesus. And uh, I would go and pray in the graveyard. Outside there was a graveyard. And that's where I'd go study because nobody could talk to you. Isn't that wonderful? But I had a hunger for God. And I knew there was more than salvation. 
And literally, I got married and found out it wasn't perfect. It was the hardest trip of my life. For the next 10 years, my husband was the same as a guy. I was non-denominational. I would take authority over him. He would take authority over me. We would cast each other out. But nothing seemed to work, you know. I didn't believe in the submit word. I hated the S word. I, I got to be, gotta behave to this morning because she just met me. But you all know what I'm, I'm saying. But there's a scripture that Paul wrote. He says, Beloved, by using all diligence to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you and exhort you earnestly. Contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints in Jude 3. Contending for the faith. Contending for the salvation of your loved ones. Contending for the miraculous. Contending for revival. When I walked in this house this morning, my spirit leaped in me. And I said to the Lord, I said, God, something leaped in me this morning. And it was like Elizabeth coming in contact with Mary. I came in contact with the anointing. There's very few churches you can walk into and come in contact with that anointing that you carry in this house. You know, with two or three together, uh, together, he's there in the midst of us. I'll tell you something. You've got a host of heavenly warring angels in this place. And there's an anointing over this house. There is a river that has not run dry in this house. And I kept seeing in the spirit a well. And I started seeing it just stirring round and round and round like a cyclone. And God says the anointing of this house will be like a cyclone. And it's going to spring up. And people are going to say there's something about the house. So think it not strange. The struggles. Think it not strange. The words of people that would rise up against the house of the Lord. Because the devil knows that if he can bring you down, if he can separate the body of Christ, if he can bring condemnation and offense in the house of the Lord, then the devil knows that he has governing, governing abilities over those people's lives that have literally got sucked into the lies. But when a man or woman of God is lifted by the Spirit of God, is walking by the ways of the Spirit, they are not con concerned with the things in the natural. They're not concerned with what people are saying about a church. They're saying, God's not schizophrenic. He put me there. I'm there for a reason. I'm not about being popular. I'm not about my name being known. I'm there because the Holy Ghost has put me there. Because you go to church not because, oh, they're going to have a good sermon on Sunday and they got good music, but because you're hungry and you're thirsty and the Spirit of the Lord is feeding you through that man or woman of God that's preaching. That's right. Several years ago, I was in Ireland, and I've been to Ireland about 15, 16 times. And uh, that's my mission trip, is Ireland. And while I was in Ireland, it was my first trip. And it was my first trip. I was preaching for uh, Pastor Rodney Howe Brown in Florida. And, uh, and somebody saw me on TV, and they said, Will you come to Ireland? And I came to Ireland. And they told me, they said, you know, you're going to have to um, take a flight to Dublin. And when you get to Dublin, you'll get on a bus, come down to Belfast, and we'll pick you up. Well, I was like, well, for it. I didn't care. I was like, this is exciting. I'm going to Ireland, you know. Well, I got on the bus not knowing what God was getting ready to do. When I arrived in Belfast, this couple, this pastor picked me up. His coat was like threadbare. You could tell he was very poor. And he picked me up and he said, I'm so glad you're coming to preach for me. He says, I've only got maybe 10 or 15 people. I said, I don't care. Well, you know what? Every empty pew, there's an angel sitting there. The Holy Ghost is there. As long as you're a carrier of the glory, there's something that's going to happen. Jesus didn't start out with a million. He started out with one. He called one and then another and then another. There was a ripple effect to that anointing. We walk in a ripple effect of the power of God. And so, <laughs> oh, Shabanda. So, 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 to make a long story longer, I remember I was sitting, they put me in a, in a bed and breakfast, and it was tiny. I mean, I was in the smallest little room. I had a tiny little bathroom. My friend Trisha traveled with me because I didn't want to go alone. And while we were in this room, the pastor said, I'm going to come and get you, take you to dinner. Well, we went to dinner, and I remember I just ordered... I didn't ask you a question. And we, I ordered a small cup of soup. And while I was sitting there, this guy walks in, and he's in a three-piece suit. He's dressed 
rise to the nines. And these three businessmen are surrounding him and his family's there. And they're just catering to his every need. And so I said to the pastor, I said, that guy's an American. I'm going to go say hi. He said, oh, don't. I said, why not? He said, well, I didn't want to say anything. But he's the evangelist that's taking over from you Sunday. And now those three men are the businessmen that pay the mortgage and everything on my church. I'm just, they just hired me to do everything. And he said that he's upstairs. They've given him the whole upstairs. And I was like, I didn't get mad. I didn't get upset. I went and started preaching that next morning. And when I started, 10, 15 people by Wednesday turned to 100. Then 150 by Wednesday, by Thursday. I wasn't even supposed to be staying there that long. I was only there for one meeting, but the glory of God fell. How many of you are hungry for more of God? But what amazed me was I had no understanding yet of the gift that God had given me. I know we underestimate the anointing. I'm still growing up in the anointing. I'm still, every day you're in a place of metamorphosis. God wants you to step into a place where vision can, where, where reason cannot walk. It's called faith. That's why I say you've got to contend for the faith. Because there's going to be battles that's going to come against you. There's going to be things that's going to try and pull you down. But you press in and you make a demand on the anointing. You never stop. You keep going. You stir up your most holy faith. And so, you know, what was crazy, what was amazing to me was I did those meetings and one night, Thursday night, I was getting ready to, I was supposed to leave, I was supposed to be leaving, and every single day after the meeting started exploding, that evangelist would come to me, you're leaving tomorrow, you need to get out of here, I'm preaching Sunday, you better be gone by Sunday, and nobody knew this was happening, I had never had an attack like this by anybody, I'd never been under that, but so... I remember as I was there, one of the couples took me for a drive, and they took me to a place where the crown of thorns later, or the crown of, well, anyway, one of those movies, was later filmed. You would know it. I don't know it. I don't watch too many like that. But anyway, when I was driving up to this church, it was the Church of Ireland. And I started seeing the Church of Ireland, and I looked, and I looked in the field, and the field had she had wheat. And the wind was whipping off the ocean and was blowing on this wheat. But there were sheep and the sheep had their back to the wheat. And there was a plow in the middle of the field but it was broken. And there was a, I mean, I was like, all these things. And I said, God. And I walked into this church. I had to walk through a graveyard to get into the church. It was an old church of Ireland. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, the church has become dead. But the Lord says, I will blow a wind of the Holy Ghost across the wheat across the harvest fields. And I will cause the sheep to look again to the harvest. And I will cause a great fire of revival to come upon this hour. And I started prophesying what God was going to do throughout Ireland and throughout wherever I went. Well, when I went down into this little clove down by, an, by a waterway, as I was there, I watched a man who was literally painting in a VW van. He was in a VW van painting and he's covered in, 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 in ink, in, in paint. And I walked up to him, and all I saw was the outline of the Church of Ireland that I've just come out of, in charcoal, the steeple. And I said, sir, I'm going in there to get a cup of tea. When I come out, I'm going to buy this painting. I didn't even have any money. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm spirit-led, spirit-fed. I'm telling you, this is not your normal cup of tea. I jump on planes with nothing and land in countries, and God just opens the meetings. I'm, I, I really love Jesus. I'm, I know he's real. And so, to make a long story longer, we came out. That man had painted that church. But not only that, he had painted the field. The sheep were looking into the harvest field. The man was upon the plow that had been broken in the natural. In the supernatural, God had, had that man paint a plow that was going through the field. It was a supernatural picture. And the people with me said, we're buying you this picture. Because what you just prophesied up on the mountain. How many know that in order to get to the mountain of the Lord, there's places the enemy's going to take you and they're called narrow ways. You know that? Don't quit. Hold on, let me open this. I got a good magnet on it. So I was getting ready to leave Ireland. I didn't want to leave. And the Spirit of the Lord came to me. And he said this to me in a dream. He said, come with me, Robin. And he took me to the airport. 
and I found myself standing on a tarmac. And I didn't know in Belfast you can't fly big boats into Belfast. It's always little planes that you have to walk out the door down the stairs onto the tarmac. And here I was walking on the tarmac, and there was this little plane. And there was a man standing on each side of the plane. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, ask them who they are. I said, who are you? And the one said, I am the warning angel that has come over this country from this country. I am the warning angel from that country. And I said, well, what are you doing in Ireland? He said, haven't you heard? God has brought a mighty woman of God, Robin Tom Rogers, to Ireland to release the fire. To release, well, I didn't, it's, I'm not telling you this from my accolades. I'm just telling you something. When I woke up, that man was banging on my door upstairs. How many know there's always going to be somebody out there to help you remain crucified? I'm telling you, get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. So I believe that we're in an hour right now. I left the next day Friday, and I repented to God. But ever since then, I've been back over 15 times. I just had the whatever, the Lord Mayor of, of Belfast at the storm that they invited me to come. And God has used me instrumentally to release something through that country. But I found out that God releases us that are obedient and that are surrendered. And that even if you mess up, God's always going to be there to pick you up and say, come on, there's more. There's more. So get, your voice has a sound in the heavens. How many know your voice has a sound in the heavens? The minute you utter or call upon the name of Jesus, your spirit man is de de declaring something. You know what it's declaring? Jesus, I believe in you. And Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. The reason that I sing with all I am. And something starts happening. And you find out when you can't, God says you can. And you start seeing the credibility of God working through your life. As a Christian, God didn't call you to be a Christian that sits in a pew and becomes a pew. God called you to walk in a place where reason cannot walk. It's faith. God calls you to walk in a place where you contend for everything that, you know what, a lot of times when you need something, you want something, you'll be amazed how God will cause your spirit man to be stirred to pray, to be stirred to intercept, to intercede. Because a lot of times we don't think we're good enough to get that, and God's trying to tell you, you are good enough. Only believe all things are possible. Last year I was here in, in um, I'm not going to tell that yet, I'm not. But you know, the prayers of a righteous, the effectual firm prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When I got saved, I can't tell you what day it was. All I know is, growing up, I always was in a camp meeting. I was in a tent meeting in Africa. All I can tell you was that I would listen as they would sing. Brother and Sister Ruder would start singing. Daughters crack, crack, wunderbar and crack. Any die by the blood von die lamb. Daughters crack, crack, wunderbar and crack. Any die by the blood von die lamb. They would start singing, there's power in the blood. And what I remember as a little girl standing in the dust of Africa, and they would pitch a tent up in the middle of nowhere, and I never knew a shovel, is that what you, we call them a spade, I never knew that they were square. I always thought they were round, because we were always putting these, these um, round tent holes to put the tent up. And then the tent would be lit up, and then the generator wouldn't work. And then my dad would walk around going, Lord, you see, I need, I thank you for it. He'd write it on his hands. I thank you for it. We need a generator right now. The generator's not working. And I watched as literally a truck would drive by and the generator would fall off the back of a truck. And the truck would keep going. It was always supernatural. Now, that was then. I watched thousands upon thousands of people get saved. As a little girl, they would sing those old songs, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my hungry cry, while on others thou art calling. I know you're not past me by, Savior, Savior. Hear my humble cry. They would sing that, but my favorite song, because I remember the presence of God. I didn't understand why I just wanted to weep all the time as a little girl, three, four, five years old, because the presence, the atmosphere. 
Today they say the atmosphere is changing now. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is here. But nobody explained it like that. It was just, you just, ex you just lived it. You just lived it. When they start singing, just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, and as thou bidst me come to thee, O man of God, I come, I come. Nobody had to do anything. No invitation to follow Jesus. No invitation to get saved, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, you'd watch as people would start getting up and weeping and crying and walking to the altar to meet Jesus. When they sang that song, I see Jesus, so I feel Jesus. You knew he was in the house. But you know, I come to America and every now and then, my church is a big church in Northern Kentucky. It's my cousin. She, my cousin runs it now. But we would have the Who's Who and the Little Zoo come through. We had Pat Boot, even. We had Benny Hinn. We had the Copelands. We had the, the plants. I used to pick them up in their private plant. But something between A and Z, somewhere along the way, I lost my vision. I lost my hope. And then Jesus came. When I least expected, he had never left me. He had never gone away. He was there. Remember that old He was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. I just had to let him in. And I didn't know I was going to sing this much. I apologize. But and, and, and you can't imagine, I was in my church. We were there. We were around the Holy Ghost. Evangelists would come in. You'd feel that anointing. And then they'd stop it to take the offering. The glory of God would be in the house and they would stop to give the laters whatever is happening that week. And you'd be like, did I just dream the presence of God? Has anybody ever been in that place? And so I was, I was hungry. But I didn't know what, what I was seeking out. How many know you can get so hungry for something and you get so angry because you're like, I don't know what's wrong. And you and the devil puts you, but you've got to get the mind of Christ. you got to have, you know, you've got to have an air of expectancy in your spirit for the things of God. And I remember, I didn't know what was missing. I just knew something was missing. And I wasn't moving in any of the gifts. In fact, I was hiding in the bookstore. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my brother's church exploded with the move of God. My brother's word of faith church, where nobody did anything like what I was hearing. People were rolling on the floor. People were weeping. People were drunk as skunks. The glory of God was falling. People were stuck to the walls. I remember I walked in. My brother was, was jogging in one spot. I said, what's wrong with you? And later on he told me, well, I had fire in my feet. I had fire in my feet. I said, dear God, somebody should have got water and just doused it, you know? I didn't understand it. I couldn't believe this stuff. So I thought my brother had this in a cult. So my brother's going to cult in his church. We've got to get rid of this evangelist. Something's wrong with him. So I took one look at the evangelist. The evangelist was this fat little short guy. He was big, but he was fat. And he waddled like a duck. That's what he did. He kept walking backwards and forwards. Well, you know what? I'm a born-again Christian. I manifested. I'm good. I'm good. I actually manifested. I grew up with seven brothers, so I know how to take care of myself. I got in the junior championships just to kill him. And so, but I manifested in church. I started screaming at my brother's deacon. What's wrong with that guy? Is he going to bring snakes out next? Because we're from Kentucky. I said, what's wrong with him? And I ran out the door, slammed my brother's door of his church. But I went home that night and the Spirit of God spoke to me. And he said, Robin, how could you have forgotten my presence? How could you have forgotten my anointing? And so it ended up 
that in the name of Jesus, what ended up happening was that I went back the second night and I thought, I'm going to get this guy out of my brother's church. At that time, the guy's name was Rodney Howard Brown. And I did not know anything about that stuff. I want people to see me. And so I came back the second night. And I sat in the second back row. And I thought, I'm going to get this guy. Because my dad prophesied a guy named William Brown at his death. My dad would walk in and prophesy what God was doing and what was wrong. Well, it ended up, hallelujah. Rodney saw me sitting in the second back row. And he said, you back there. Come up here and let me pray for you. And I said, no way. There was no way that I was going to fall on the floor and roll under a pew and stick to the walls and laugh like a hyena and cry in public. I was Robert Tom's daughter. I was Robin Tom's sister. No way. And the next thing I knew, when I said no, he said this. And no evangelist. I'm saying, I picked up the who's who from their private planes. I knew the who's who in the back rooms. Richard Roberts, R. Roberts, all of them. Next thing I knew, one minute I was sitting there and he said one word. He said, well, he said a couple words. He said, well, then I'll come back there and get you. But nobody ever threatened me in church. I thought, I, I didn't have a chance to think. One minute I was in a pew, the next minute I was flying across the room and it wasn't a devil because devils don't feel that good. And guess what? When I hit the floor, I cried and cried and cried. For 45 minutes, I cried. So if you want to put a time on it. But when I got off the floor, I kept saying, why isn't the church teaching that there's more than salvation? Why isn't the te church teaching this intimacy? Do you know there's an intimacy? There's a place where reason cannot walk. There's a place of faith where he walks with you and he talks with you. And he tells you you are his own. And the joy is you'll share in that intimate place. As you tarry there, none other has ever known. And my life was changed. I got up from the floor. I literally was on the floor, looked in the heavens. I saw Jesus. I saw the cross. The cross was empty. I looked next to me and I saw Jesus and the people who were laughing, he was laughing over. And the people who were weeping, he was weeping over. And I said, God, what is this? And he said, this is my bridal shower. He said, no longer will my church live in a place of condemnation. He said, I'm taking off the old and I'm putting in the new garments on my, body, on my bride. And you know, the church has come to a place right now where it's become complacent and it's been asleep. When you go overseas, for me to go overseas, the hunger of the people is unbelievable. Do you know that a lot of the churches have been brought up and made into mosques overseas? And these poor pastors are literally settling for just using and renting school halls. Anything they can find to have church. Because everything's being taken over. But I'm here to tell you something. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It dwells in you, it dwells in me, and it's going to quicken the nations. It's going to, it's quickening even now. People that you don't even know their names, that's never been in the presence of God, they could be in the middle of the Sahara Desert, or the Kalahari, but God will meet them, and he will speak into their life. You know how I know that? Because one time I ordered an Uber, and this Uber kept, kept turning around and canceling on me, and I thought, what in the world is wrong with this guy? Why does he keep canceling on me? Next thing I know, this one guy shows up, and he, I get in, I knew he was a Muslim, and I said, how are you? And he said, I'm fine. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm a preacher. I preach the gospel over the world. He said, you're the one I need to talk to. I said, really? I said, why? He said, I had a dream. I had a dream, and a man in white came to me, and he said, come to me, my son. Come to me. I love you. Come to me. I need you. And he said, I didn't know what it was. I woke up. He said, my wife is Catholic. My wife put a big wooden cross over the, over the bed. She took me to see a priest. The priest didn't know what to tell me. And I said, well, let me tell you what God's telling me. I said, oh, he said, no, wait, there's more. I said, what more is there? He said, the next night I had another dream. He said, he's actually said, a couple of days ago I had another dream. And he said, in this dream I was in prison. And the same man in white came to me and he said, my son, 
Son, come to me, come to me. I want to take you out of this prison. I want to take you out. I want to set you free. And he said, I didn't know what he said. All I know is that when I ran to him, I fell down. Something come on me, and I fell at his feet. And I started telling him what it was. Well, I was driving up, and he was driving on East Orange, up, up, up whatever, 95. The man starts like he's peddling a little tricycle. He's going two miles an hour. I said, sir, you got to go faster. He said, oh, no, no, no. He said, I don't want this ride to end. I want to hear what you're telling me. And you could feel the presence of God. And I started telling him about how Jesus was calling him into salvation, what God had for his life. Let me say, this is a Muslim man. Next thing I know, we, I said, do you want to give your life to Jesus right now? He says, oh, no, no, not now, because I don't want to fall down while I'm driving. He said, let's wait till we get to the hotel. Well, we get to the hotel, and he gets, he jumps out, grabs the door open, grabs me, and says, now pray, pray. He didn't even know how, I mean, the man was, I was like, how did I He got saved. He got saved. You see, God is moving by his spirit, moving on all the earth. Signs and wonders where God's moving. Move, oh Lord, through me. You see, the reason you come to church here is because your spirit man is expected for God to sow into you his heartbeat. Your spirit man is hungry and thirsty. And this is a place where you know the spirit of God will feed your spirit man. That he'll quench your thirst. You've got to recognize... There are mountains that will rise up before us. They're life situations. But when you turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus. When you look full of his wonderful things. Then the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light and the light of his glory and grace. For you're standing now in a waterfall of a holy ring of a heavenly crown. For he's crowned you with authority. He's crowned you with his heart. You gotta recognize you've been crowned. You've been anointed. Doesn't matter what your background is. Doesn't matter who you know or what your job is. Life puts status on things. God's not looking for status. He's looking for a man and a woman that says, here I am, God, use me. And it doesn't matter how old you are. I was last year, he doesn't know this. I don't think you know this. Last year, I was in, 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 um, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My goodness, this place, the Lord says, is going up. The Lord says, the wind has tried and blowed. It's almost like you've been through a, a, a tunnel. But God says, I'm breaking open. The t I see the tunnel just breaking apart. I see this tunnel that's just breaking, and the light is shining through. And God says, there's men and women, God, in this place, their spirits are going to soar in my anointing. They're going to soar in my vision. They're going to soar in my word. I see God literally causing the word of God to come out of somebody's mouth like umamasha, like fire. I see people prophesying, decreeing, and declaring over this hour, not just over the city, not just over this region, but over this hour. I see dispatches of angels being released into other cities and other nations as the Holy Ghost wakens you up in the middle of the night. I see as intercession is birthed out of your spirit, it's like a lightning rod that comes out of you and you release it. And the Lord says the storms that the enemy is trying to bring against the house, the Lord says they have dissipated because what's rising up right now is men and women of God of great utterance, says the Lord. And, 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 and I'm telling you, I'm not just proclaiming this. I'm not just saying this. I see provision. I see God literally providing money to businesses. God is going to cause you to prosper. Pastor, God is going to cause you to prosper like you've never prospered before. The Lord says your foundation is built on a solid rock. It's not built on so, on, 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 on whatever, melting soil, whatever that is, sink sand. 
Tinkin saying, your foundation has been built on me. And the Lord says, where the enemy came with a wind and he tried to tear, tear you this way. And he tried to say, go that way. The Lord says, I caused you to run my way. And now the Lord says, there's a new shining of my glory that's going to come on this house. And the Lord says, the, the stirring of the well that's in this house will be like a cyclone of water that will spring up out of people's spirit, man. And they will say, the Lord has done a work in me. No eye can see, no ear can hear, and no tongue can even confess because they have not seen yet what God's getting ready to bring out of this house. Hallelujah. No one. I'm telling you. They don't know what that is. But it's not about the house. Let me tell you, when I talk about a house, I'm talking about the spirit of men. When I talk about a, a house, when, I talk, when I'm talking, I'm not talking about a church with four walls. I'm talking about your spirit of men. God is raising you up. I had no understanding of the plan God had for my life. From a little girl, I dreamed dreams. From a little girl, I didn't know I moved prophetically. I didn't know anything. All I knew was Daddy said Jesus is going to do it, and it happened. All I knew is my daddy, when I prophesied his death to him before, when I was 17 years old, he started teaching and pouring into me. And he kept saying, remember, Robin, the littlest thing is as great as the greatest. The greatest thing is as great as the littlest thing in the eyes of God. And he kept saying, don't let them take your joy. Be like a child. Let your spirit man always be like a child before the Lord. And he said, don't, and he told me several things. But the one thing I know is I never knew the fullness of the anointing or understood it until I walked in it. Until you walked in the footsteps of Jesus. Until you've allowed him to robe you and adorn you with his heartbeat. You have no comprehension. Don't be satisfied with a little bit. Say, God, I want it. I want the whole enchilada and everything in it. I try to say that in Europe, and they don't even know what an enchilada is. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was like, whatever. Whole meat pie. There you, go. you just got to know it, you know? But get hungry. Say, Lord, if, you don't, if you've lost your first love. See, I lost my first love. When I got touched when I was meeting, I began to realize I had underestimated the anointing that was in people's lives. I didn't have a clue. I thought I knew everything. The greatest revelation I had was that I knew nothing and God could use me. That was the greatest thing that God ever did to me. One day I was with my brother. My brother wanted to go hear Noble Hayes. I had never met Noble and I wanted to meet Noble so I went with him. My brother was 24 years older than me. So we go and I remember in the back room I was telling Noble. I said, Noble, because I knew he loved faith and he loved jokes. And I said, Noble, you want to hear a joke? And he said, sure. And I said, well, there was this woman, and the woman had a spirit of gluttony. And she went to her pastor, and she said, Pastor, can you cast this out of me? And the spirit, the pastor went to cast it out of him, and the spirit said, he said, come out, and the spirit said, no. And the pastor said, come out, and the spirit said, no. So Pastor Normal Hayes said, well, what happened? He said, well, the pastor said, come out in the name of Jesus. The pastor said, well, I, the, the spirit said, well, I come out for a cookie. And so Noble thought that was hysterical, you know. But the woman came back and she said, well, I've been giving that thing cookies, but it's a lying devil because it hasn't come out yet. It's got a lying spirit too because I feed it all the time. So Noble says, well, what happened? I said, well, the pastor said, you lying devil. You foul, tormenting spirit. You come out. And the thing said, no. He said, identify yourself. What's your name? And the spirit said, my name's Chips Ahoy. Well, Noble thought that was hysterical. He thought that's the funniest joke he'd ever heard, you know. You can tell jokes in church. If you get offended right now, offense is the breeding ground for demonic activity. Shake it off. Shake it off. You know, you listen, get, you know, you could be happy in church. Yes. You know? So, it's, it's good to be happy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. I actually have more scriptures in here, but we'll go there later. And so... I was, Noble went out to go preach, and my brother looked at me, and he said, I can't believe you would tell a stupid joke to the man of God that's getting ready to get in the pulpit. How crazy are you? What would you tell a stupid joke? Well, I, it was a brother-sister thing. I felt totally hurt, condemned. Woe is me, I'm a maggot. I messed up the man of God's sermon. I didn't know yet. Listen, it wasn't his sermon, it was God. When you step into heavens with your voice, God's going to speak out of your spirit, man. It's not going to be me, you know? And so I remember, I remember, 
walking out there and they started praising. I just want to praise you. And all they would start singing, I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. And I start singing that song. And they start singing that song. And as they were singing, I had an open vision. And the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, whatever you want to call it, he spoke to me. He said, Robert, today I put a baton in your hands. You're going to run to the nations. I said, okay, Lord. He said, I put a cold of, I felt like somebody had put honey in my mouth. It was a scroll, and it dissipated in my spirit. He said, this is my revelation knowledge. And then he said, there's fire. And he put bowls of fire in my hands. He said, this is my glory. You're going to release it into the nations. You're going to throw it. And then he put a mantle on me. He said, this is another level of the prophetic anointing, the mantle of the office of a prophet. See, they don't teach you. Listen, you can go to a hundred schools of the prophets. You're not a prophet unless you're born into it. And that's what I believe because I had no idea what I had. Do you think Jonah had an idea that he was born? Do you think Samuel, do you think Hannah had a clue she was carrying the office of a prophet when she went into travail to have that child and she went to the temple and Eli the priest thought she was drunk but what was happening was you see all along the way if you look at that whole thing of what was going on that whole whatever you'll find out the devil tried to bring everything he could to dissect and stop the hand of God from moving to see the fulfillment of something that was getting ready to come forth because when Hannah surrendered what was in her spirit what was in her womb God was able to use it when you surrender what's in your womb, in your spirit, man, God will be able to use you. I have come to the point of no return. All of you, Jesus. I surrendered everything like Hannah. Hannah had no idea she was carrying the office of a prophet called Samuel that one day would, pro would anoint Saul to be king and then anoint David. And out of his lineage would come Christ the king. No idea of the ripple effect to what was getting ready to come because of the hunger of her heart. Well, let me tell you something. I was in that meeting, and the Holy Ghost started speaking to me. You know what he said to me? He said, Robin, today I put a crown upon your head. And I said, God, I don't deserve a crown because we think, you know, we're not, we're not worthy to receive. Listen, your crown is your authority. Your crown is your authority. I have so much authority. When I walk in the room, the demons have to never spread them. They know that I know the power of the blood. They know it. I walk in, and the, every meeting is different. I know how to speak to planes to come back. I was left in Chicago Airport. The plane left me. They told me, oh, you know, you're going to have to go to Newark. There's no more flights out here to Dublin tonight. I said, oh, no, I'm going to be on that flight to, to Dublin out of here, out of Chicago. She said, honey, it's gone. And she put me on a flight to Newark. I'm sitting there in the airport in Chicago at gate C-18. My, my Dublin flight left out of B something, that terminal. I'm sitting there, all of a sudden I see the glitch on the thing. The Newark flight is delayed. The Newark, the flight they put me on now is delayed. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to get until 1 o'clock in the morning now, it looks like. Next thing I know, I hear the United people going, we don't know what's going on. The flight to Dublin has turned around. It's come back. I'm telling you, I have things happen. I'm not just telling you this. I know it. I got on that plane. I told the guy, came back for me. <laughs> Told the flight that came back for me. I prayed. I'm supposed to preach in Dublin. Came back for me, and he just looked at me. He said, "Okay." Next morning, I woke up. The flight attendant, one of the female flight attendants, was like, "There's a woman of God on here. She prayed the plane back." <laughs> I'm there talking all about me on the plane because you know what? They'll talk about me. They will. And then the next day, I said to the flight attendant, "I said, why did this thing turn around?" He said, "They said there was smoke in the engine." So the holy smoke. <laughs> In the Holy Spirit and the engine. Don't you love it? Because God. Amen. God is moving. Because yeah. I know He's real. Yeah. I know He's alive. I know when I see people in my meetings that are got cutters on all over their bodies and the Holy Ghost falls and they get set free of being cutters. I see people delivered of alcoholism. My dad was said he was a good drunken Methodist and one day he got saved. You need to read that book, The New Wine, and, and share it with people. I didn't bring it. You can download it from my website. Joe Lowstein had me put it on there. But let me tell you something. I got in the car with my brother after that event happened. Because you know what happened in that meeting in, with Noble? 
Noble gets up to speak after I've had this open vision. And he says to me, he says, Roman, he's talking to my brother. Your sister must please God a lot because the Bible says he gives joy to those who please him. And she's a pleasure to be around. Now, I've just been in a shroud of condemnation. But God knew how to break it off of you in two seconds flat. You can either hold on to your brokenness. You can hold on to your sorrows. You can hold on to your mistakes of yesterday. Or you can stand in the presence of God and say, Lord, you are my hiding place. You are, I mean, you are my deliverer. You are my God. You could be like David in all his mistakes. He still entered the heartbeat of God. Every mistake he turned around and he went to the host of all glory. His name is God Almighty. El Shaddai. Jehovah Nissi. Shalom is what they call him. And you see, when you get into that place, she's falling asleep. You know, I used to go to church with you. I grabbed her, I kidnapped her. I said, you're going with Nani. She, it's, been, it's been a trip. She says, you're famous. Everybody knows you. I'll tell this story. She got in trouble this year. She was in ISAP. And so I go to preach somewhere, and this woman comes up to me. She says, are you Avery's grandma? I said, I am. How do you know? She says, well, she's in ISAP a lot. But she says... She said, she's always watching your videos on YouTube, and I said, she's watching me preach. <laughs> she's, a, she's awake. Oh, she is. Oh, yeah. She's trying to act silly over there. Avery, you should be sitting up like a lady. So, <laughs> but she got to recognize, you got something in you that's more than anything you could ever ask or think. There's so much God wants to do through your life. You can either stand and see the salvation of God for your family. I've stood for my family. Or you can lay down and wallow in their brokenness. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to adapt to the moment. You know, and I know I'm speaking a lot, but I'm telling you the salvation that I walk in, the presence of God. It's hard when you're a born-again Christian to see the church that becomes dwindled down to nothing. To see the lack of faith in the body, to not see the gifts of God in operation, operation like I grew up in. But I'm not going to adapt to the lay of the land. As long as there's a voice in me, as long as there's a sound in me, I'm going to decree he's alive. He's alive. He has risen from the dead and he's alive. And all it takes is one of us, folks. It's all it takes. God will tell you, he said, you know, you're my precious treasure. You're my valiant warrior. And you'll be like, are you kidding me? I haven't done nothing for you, God. You'll be like Gideon. When the angel of the Lord approached Gideon, and he said, Gideon, now, valiant warrior. The Lord is with you, and he's called you. And Gideon was like, are you kidding me? Have you seen the lay of the land? Have you seen the country, what it's in, what the mess we're in? But you know what? The children of Israel adapted to their environment. They wanted other things. They didn't want to serve God like they should. And therefore, God gave them the desires of the heart. How many know God has given this nation the desires of its heart? Yeah. But is it what they need? Yeah. I have found that God let me run for a season, and then he pulled me in, and he said, uh-uh, that's not what you need. And he started blasting me with blessings, blasting me with vision of who he was. He started releasing like lightning bolts. He started doing things in my spirit, man, that put such a hunger in me that I just wanted more. I want more. I want more of that. And instead of waiting for Benny Hinn to come to town or Rodney Howe Brown or anybody else, I said, Lord, I want all of you. And I got with the Lord. I got alone with God. Let me tell you what God's getting ready to do. The church in its in its hour was, at, if you look back in the times of old, the church was great, and then all of a sudden it dwindled almost down to nothing during the Roman Empire, during Alexander the Great. There was a whole bunch of stuff going on. But let me tell you something. It just took one. One to keep pressing in. One to keep shaking the horns of the altar of God and say, God, come. Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own gentle way. It just took one. 
and things imploded. Two days ago, I was in my kitchen, Pastor, and the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I've released the working of miracles, the gift of the working of miracles. And I said, Lord, we need a move. We need something. We need, you know, something's got to stir right now, God. And I was talking to the Lord because I thought, man, it's been a year for me. And the Lord says, Robin, I've released it. And I said, you give me a sign. And I got a phone call from London, England. I was just there a couple of months ago. I said, Robin, I've got to put Matthew on the phone. And it's my gypsy friend. You see, this is how God operates in my life. I went to South Africa, I was preaching, and the Holy Ghost says to me, jump a plane, go to England. I knew one pastor in England. I got on Virgin Atlantic, I get to England, and the next thing I know, I called the pastor from the airport. I said, remember you want me to come preach? He said, yes, when can you be here? I said, I'm here. He said, I'm on my way. Well, he comes to get me, and when he comes to get me, he says, you know, my brother Glenn is preaching down in Southampton. Do you mind going with me? I said, no, I'll go with you. So I go to South Africa, Southampton, and you've got to understand, I'm a prophet that moves by divine appointments, by divine assignments. It's not just about evangelizing. It's walking into regions. I don't look at how many people there, or what, you know, I don't, at the cost, I go by the Spirit, because God's always taking care of me. So I get to Southampton, I walk in, and there's Glenn. Glenn recognizes me, he knows me. He says, I can't believe the prophet of God, Robin Tom Rogers, has walked in this place. He said, Robin... A speaker couldn't get a visa out of Africa. Can you take his place? He gives me the mic. I start singing to come into the presence of God. I start just singing. Because when I was a little girl, and I tell you why I sing so much, it's Jesus. But when I was a little girl, there was a woman that my dad brought to South Africa called Vicki Jameson. And I would be in her meetings. And when she sang, the glory of God would perform. People would be miraculously healed. And the Lord had told me, the same anointing that was upon Vicky, I'm putting upon you, people will be healed in your meetings. Well, I never think about stuff like that. I just go and do what God says. Well, here I am in Southampton, England, and all of a sudden I start singing. Come, my beloved, come and walk with me. Come, my beloved, there's so much I'll show to thee. And I start singing the song. In the waterfall of my amazing love, my glory falls on me. And I start just, it's just coming out of my spirit. Well, there was a woman there and I said, ma'am, you just lost a son. She said, I have. I looked at the other lady and said, your name is Victoria. She says, I am. My name is Victoria. I start praying. God starts touching people. I go from there. I walk up to this young guy. Glenn says, come up here. and he talks to the young guy who's carrying some mints and a glass of water. He says, come here. He walks up to me. He thinks he's going to give me a mint or some water. And I said, the Lord says. And I start weeping because I felt the compassion of God. I felt the anointing. And I said, the Lord says, the same office of the prophet that was upon my dad that's upon me will come upon you this day. And the Lord says, the same anointing that was on A. Allen will fall on you, and you will move in the word of knowledge. And I start prophesying to this young man. You know, he falls out of the power of God. He's out for over, I don't even know how long, an old man comes up to me, and he says, who are you? And I said, I'm Robin Tom Rogers. This is after everything's over. He says, who are you? He said, are you related to a man named Robin Tom? Now, my dad's been dead for over 20 years. I said, that's my dad. How do you know my dad? He said, in 1967 to 74, your father would come here and minister. He said, that's my grandson on the floor. He said, he would come and minister with A. Allen here in this church. He said, this is my son's church. He said, I had a divine appointment. Today is a day of divine appointments. God has orchestrated your footsteps into this house. Because God has wanted to awaken you to an understanding that he's heard the cries of your heart. And he's seeing your obedience and your surrender. And God says, I'm bringing you out of places that you thought were shut. I'm bringing you into a new field. It's like I see a field before this whole place. And the Lord says, I'm bringing you to a river to drink. It's fresh water. It's refreshing water. God is refreshing you today with a fresh anointing, with a fresh outpouring of his spirit. The Lord says, 
I'm awakening you to the understanding that I have not walked away from you. I have not left you. Don't give up on me. But stand and see the salvation of my spirit as it moves to the land. For the Lord says, I have need of thee. I have need of thee in thy voice in the heavens to pray, to declare, to release a sound that will go before, beyond these walls into the very atmosphere and be carried by my spirit into to regions that people do not know and they have not heard, but by your obedience and by your intercession and by you standing in one accord, just like Gideon rose up out of his misery and he took the mandate that God had given him and he stood with the other 300 that God had chosen to walk with him and they saw the salvation of God for the deliverance of the nation of Israel. The Lord says, watch the deliverance of this nation. It is not fallen. It is not dead. My salvation still flows like sweet wine through the streets, through the highways, through the byways, through the places of poverty and even rich areas. God says, watch what I'm getting ready to do in this hour. This hour is not defeated. There's not, it doesn't matter who's president. Because let me tell you something. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is on the throne. He is the great I Am. He is your victorious right hand. He will not leave you forsaken. He has heard your cry. Deliverance is nigh the doors of America. Deliverance is nigh the doors of America. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. What did the prophet do when he heard the sound? We are so glued to that moment of him hearing the sound that we forget that he released something into a servant. He said to his servant, go see, go see, go see. A prophet should be telling you, go see. What do you see by the Spirit? What are you really revealing? What are you feeling by the Spirit? The prophet kept pursuing and pushing and probing at that servant. Go and see what God's getting ready to do. I'm enduring you. Come and see what God, look to the heavens from whence cometh your help. Because when the servant came back the seventh time, he said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. But then the Lord spoke through the prophet and he said to him, now go tell it. Amen. Go tell. That servant became an evangelist. That servant became a witness unto the very people that had persecuted the hour. The king Ahab and Jezreel and Jezebel, he was made to go and speak. You better get yourself ready because it's getting ready to rain. I'm here to tell you, I'm ready to tell the White House, I'm ready to tell every government place there is and every government seat, it's getting ready to rain by the Spirit. And when it moves, there's a radical move of God that's going to come out of the catacombs. God is not dead, He is alive in this house, and He's calling us as witnesses to release. It's not about one faith or one old nations or one old, that the king of, what do you call it, what do you, in England's trying to decree. The only king is Jesus. The only God is El Shaddai. The Holy Ghost is a person and he's here right now to move through your mortal body, to quicken you, to arrange your very footsteps. To walk in the counsel of God to set the captives free. Thank you. Thank you. Can you put that turn your eyes on Jesus, Mr. Sound Man? If you don't mind, just put turn your eyes on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who's glad they came to church? I wasn't sure what I was coming into. I never think about it. I just go. Just close your eyes and look at the heavens. Speak to your spirit, man. Stir up your faith. Contend for the faith. Contend for the anointing. Doesn't matter what age you are. Last year they told me I had five strokes. They told me I, I died in the car. But look where I am now. Oh, so are you weary in trouble? Oh, hallelujah. They told me I had a stroke in the right lobe, the front lobe, the back lobe, the left lobe. They said I should be dead. Or I shouldn't be walking. A little African American lady in a Delta lounge a week before walked up to me. She said, Sister, the Lord says you'll live and not die. She said, God's getting ready to put your face before the nations. I didn't care about the second part. But I held on to that prophecy. 
Can we turn it down a little bit? Go back to that place of freedom. 
the first song place of freedom. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is in this place. I have learned when the atmosphere becomes like this, the, 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 the miracles will happen. Nobody has to say anything. Nobody has to do anything. The miraculous is in place. Because your spirit man is now in that place. You've stepped into heavens. Come, Holy Ghost. Come, sweet Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Every chain. Father, we bind every demonic spirit of addiction that would be on any of our loved ones. We lose the work in miracles right now in people's bodies in this house. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in my life. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in their life. Creative miracles in hearts, in lungs, in kidneys, in pancreas. We call the anointing of heaven the heavenly one. Come, Holy Spirit, come in your might and your power. Let the healing virtue of God flow like a sweet wine through this hour. There's, I think it's place of freedom. Hallelujah. I can't remember what song it was. It was the first one. I don't know where my phone is. There it is. It was the first song. Place of freedom. And this praise. Let's put that on. Just give me a minute because I'm getting the fire of God. The fire of God is all over this place. If you're here this morning and you're not in right standing with God. What's going to happen is you're going to feel sick to your stomach. You're going to feel like I need to get my life right with the Lord. I don't want to miss what God wants to do in me. If that's you and God's doing something in your life and you know you've compromised your walk and you need to give him your all. We're going to open these altars. We're just going to see what God does. I'm not going to put up you. I'm going to, I could call people out right now. I know them. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Whatever you have need of right now. Maybe you need a miracle in your body. I'm just going to open these altars. Whatever you need of. We're going to let the Holy Ghost just fall all over this place. Because the Holy Ghost moves when people get hungry, when they get thirsty. Can you turn up a little bit? Jesus, King of Kings. The King of Kings is in the house. The King of Kings in this house. Majesty. His Majesty is in this house. Join the songs they're already singing. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Just to bow down. Just to bow down. Just to bow down before your throne. See your face, See your face I'll cry out. Because you're holy, holy, holy are you. Father, I thank you for raising her up to be a singer for the King of Kings. Jesus, Jesus, sweet oil of heaven, sweet anointed one, you're here right now, my Savior, my King, my majestic one. We just lose the anointed. I lose a fresh fire, a fresh outpouring upon every man, woman, and child in this house. I thank you, God, for the hunger of a heart. A new fresh oil, the garment of counsel that's upon us. Send me with those who have heard well done. Proclaiming forever that you're the one who's faithful, faithful, faithful are you, Lord. Oh, what can we give you but endless praise? Hallelujah! Lord, I thank you for healing marriages. I thank you for healing marriages. For healing them, Father. For doing a work in marriages this morning. I curse every spirit that the enemy would bring in anybody's house in this place. I lose peace in your home. I speak forgiveness 
losing our hearts towards each other. I lose the quickening power of God. In the Hora Baba I say that you will walk in the house of the Lord and decree and declare mighty is the King of kings and Lord of lords. I decree over your life that you will know that the Spirit of the Lord is healing you in your blood. Right now somebody's blood is being healed. I curse every spirit of affliction out of your blood. Worthy, worthy, worthy Lord. Glory, I'll see what's more worthy. In the name of Jesus, the healing balm of the earth. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of affliction from your body. Free in Jesus' name. Devil, you're a liar. You have no rights. And I curse in Jesus' name. Worthy, worthy, worthy Lord, forever, forever singing. Worthy, worthy, worthy Lord, another glimpse of glory. Hera Baba Mashana, Hora Baba Mashana. I lose that well within you. I lose the prophetic well within you, God. Hora Mashana. Worthy, worthy Lord, another glimpse, another glimpse of glory, another glimpse. Oh, Baba Mashana. Wonderful Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus, you're here. You're in our midst. You're with us. You live inside of us. You carry your glory. Father, thank you. Thank you for allowing this temple to carry your glory, to carry your presence. In Jesus' name, I lose the fire of God. I lose the fire of God. I lose the fire. In the name of Jesus, devil, you're alive. You have no rights. I curse every tormenting spirit. In the name of Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every kidney, every lung is healed right now. Every heart condition. Every ventricle valve. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Fresh touch. 
to heaven, Pastor? I'm going to give this to you for a second. You want a fresh touch today. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. It's a fresh day. It's a fresh fire. It's a fresh, 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 fresh. God's touch your life has changed and happening to you right now. I break the spirit that's even entered your bones and try to cripple you. Break in Jesus' name. It goes. Yes, we keep him in prayer. Father, I thank you for Zachary. How old is he? About 27? 30. We just wish the anointed God upon Zachary and Mark and Alexander and all their children. God, as you touch mine, touch hers. Let me tell you something. The atmosphere, you can turn it down a little bit. I'm getting ready to hand this to the pastor, but the atmosphere that you're in right now, this is the atmosphere I found. There's different aromas of the presence. There's different atmospheres. And when it happens, you, you start making a demand on the anointing. Because virtue will flow. You think that woman with the issue is just running after Jesus because all oh, a man was walking into place? She felt the atmosphere. When he walked into place, the whole atmosphere changed. She said, whatever he's got, I'm going to get my healing. The atmosphere, catch it. You know what I'm saying? Get it. Hallelujah, Pastor. You know, you know the fullness. On the stole your watch off my arm, your arm, but I was very good. I didn't steal it. He looks like he can travel the time with that watch. <laughs> For the blood of my knees are not going to look up at your teeth. I never know how to end them because I don't want to end them. I'm going to give this to Pastor because I know he's probably. With these beautiful timex that looks gorgeous on them. My God, I'm blessed in now. I'm starting to have a spirit, God. Take it off of me. Hallelujah.
we ask as our heart's desire. It doesn't end, and it doesn't have to end. I thank you that it will continue right out that door the rest of the day and the days to come. Lord. We will just be in that stream, Daddy. And for some is ankle level, for some is knee level, waist. But the desire is to be completely immersed in it. Completely immersed in it. And then we learn to flow in it. We praise your mighty God. I thank you for the words spoken over this house, Lord God. Those that have been here from the beginning since before we know, they know I thank you that you rekindled it this morning. I thank you that the, 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 the fires of our hearts have been rekindled this morning. They, they burn bright, Lord God. The house is on fire, Lord God. I will not be surprised if the fire department shows up to the prophesy. Hallelujah. And I thank you as they draw out the hoses to spray natural water, the Holy Spirit will flow supernatural water and just captivate our passion. Our public service personnel in this area, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I am not, I am not impressed right at the moment to stop and close. I I, I'm hearing late. I don't. I'm not sure. You know, you know, it's funny. I have a pastor friend, Louisville. Um, you can turn that down if you don't mind. And the pastor friend, Louisville, he's every time he calls me to preach, he's like, "I'm not, I'm not into it. It's not done. It's not done. It's not done." And thank God you have an obedient pastor. But it's like, um, it's like there's a, a tr there's a chord within your spirit. This lady here. And you have the soul of the heart of the king. And your spirit has been so hungry to see the salvation and revival that you've seen even in yesteryear. God says there's a sound that you hear in your spirit even now and it's coming. God says it's getting rid of rain. You are not alone. You intercede with several other women. You know, intercession in Hebrew is a lightning rod. It's a lightning rod. And when you intercede, you cause the lightning rod of heaven to hit those areas that need breakthrough. And God has given you that spirit, and there's even a prophetic sound within your spirit, man. God says there's change coming in your atmosphere. It's like I can see you in your home. I don't, it's like a house. I don't know what it is. I see it, and I just see you just preparing. Everything is put in place. Everything is, is like precise. And God's giving you a spirit of excellence. God says, I gave that to you. I don't know her. I don't know anything about you. I just know this. You love the Lord with all your heart. And I know you also, it's like, Michael, you're the bulldozer that keeps the whole can. It's like, the Lord says, you're the one that keeps the lid on the paint can. You, because if it didn't, there'd be splatter everywhere. There'd be splatter. You have, you have more reason in your head than, you know what I'm saying? In your spirit, you, you know, but the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to do unreasonable things. I'm going to cause you to just let go, to let go, because God says, my God, there's a joy unspeakable in you. There's a ha-ha-ha and a ho-ho-ho-ho and a shabanda bend to be. And God says, you're just going to let go. You're going to push to be. The glory of the Lord has come. And God says, you, you would be at the front. If your grandson was playing baseball or something, you'd be at the front cheering him on. I don't even know if you have a baseball player in the family, but I just see that on you. And I just see that the, the Lord says, you've said to the devil, this land is God's land. <coughs> This God, this this is what you've been praying. This name, and you, sir, your your heart is just tender. You're just tender, and the Lord says you underestimate your worth and your value. And God says I'm bringing you up that mountain now. God says you're not running around the base of a mountain. God says there's a time of change that's happening in your life right now. And the Lord says yes. It's like I see you in prisons, and like I see you praying for people, like I see you releasing things in the hearts. Of, I don't know if you work in a prison ministry or what you do, but I see God's wanting to use you and utilize you more and more. You said, "What can I do for you, God?" God says, "Watch and see what I will do." And there's a gentleman over there with the beard, with the lovely wife, and all those children. That's okay. My mother had three boys, a girl, and then four boys and another girl. 
So you'll be okay when you have the other nine. So um, <laughs> I'm not prophesying that. I'm just having fun with you. But I don't know why. So I know you work. I don't know if you work for somebody or what this is. But the Lord says, I'm going to give you the, the, the residual, the, the reserves, that you'll have your own place. That you'll do your own thing. That everything you've dreamed of happening, your own business, God says, I'm going to bring it to you. I don't know what you do, but God says, as one would put grease on their hands and try and put a bolt in place, God says, watch what I will do through you. Watch what I will do through you. Okay, you're going to have your own place, your own business. And honey, that woman over there, she could run an army. She could run an army. She really could. I, I just see the anointing of God upon you. It's been upon you since a little girl. It's been upon you since a little girl. And God says, the enemy tried to deter you this way and that, but the Lord says, I got you back. And I said, that's my daughter. And God says, it was through prayer and the faithfulness of others. And the Lord says, your heart is in my heart right now. And God says, you're in a place of metamorphosis and change. So the Lord says, don't underestimate the place I'm taking you to. And then the pastor's wife when I walked by you, the Lord gave me a garment of counsel for you. He said, there's a garment of counsel on you. And God says, you've seen a lot and you've heard a lot. But God says, listen, you're not, it's like I see you. And it's like, you know when you take a picture and it's the, the things, you can't see it because it's, it's like distorted. It's in the background. God says, you're not distorted from me and you're not in the background. You're exactly where I want you. And God says, you're not a mistake. And the Lord says, there's a lot of people that try to rise up against you because of things that's happened. But God says, you're my daughter. God says, yes, stays behind you. You're moving forward now. Okay? You're moving forward. God says, I've taken the old off, and I'm putting a new robe on you today. And the garment of counsel. There's somebody here, you had trouble with your ear. My ear is hurting me really bad. Is that you? Just lost hearing. But well, we command that deaf spirit to come out. We command that deaf spirit to loose you and set you free. Father, I come against that spirit. I was praying for a woman one time. I was actually praying for the man in front of her. And I said, and the Lord said, this is not the one. And I said, well, we command this deaf spirit, whoever this is, to come out of this person. Do you know the woman behind him had literally been beaten so much by her mother when she was a child that the blood had dried in her ear and made her deaf in her head that when I started praying, the oil of heaven, she started feeling fire in her head, and everything started melting. The blood melted out of her head, and her ears were open. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying that happened to you, but that's an unusual miracle. The, the guy who called me, and I was telling that story, and I realized I didn't finish it. Matthew just called me from England. He's a gypsy, and he told me, he said, Robin, I've never felt the presence of God like that. I've never been in a I've been to Joe Lowe's. He's a multi-millionaire. I've been everywhere. Never felt what I felt when you touched me. When I touched him, I knew virtue had gone out of me. I knew he was healed. I knew it. And he was healed of stage four cancer. Miraculously healed. And he went back to church to testify what God had done. But it's more than that. There's a ripple effect to it. You know, don't ever be satisfied with just one thing because the, a friend of mine called me three days ago and told me his son had tried, tried to overdose. And I've been trying to minister Billy. He's in England. And I said, I'm going to pray for him. Well, I called the pastor of the church where this man was miraculously healed to tell him about the miracle. He says, Robin, I'm in the room right now with Billy. I've come up here to pray for him in this hospital. I mean, it was like divine appointment, the timing of God. I said, put him on the phone. And Billy, come on the phone. I said, Billy, you're not worthless. You're not nothing. The hand of God's on your life. And I started ministering to him. And Pastor Andrew was just amazed at the timing of God. There's timing. Like for me to be here right now is... I said to the Lord, this is the only meeting I had in this area. And for me, I drove seven and a half, eight hours to get here. Well, probably more than that because Avery kept having to go to the bathroom. But I mean, <laughs> blame her. Let's blame her. And I drove, and I had peace. And, and my other granddaughter was supposed to come with him at the last second. She said, I'm not going on it. You know, because my kids don't want me to travel alone. And I'm like, I'm fine. I really am fine. But, you know, they want somebody with me. So... It was just amazing to get here. And then I said, Lord, I know you've got me here. I didn't know why, but I know now. Normally I don't ask, but it was different because there, my spirit man right now, since I had the strokes and everything, my spirit man is acutely aware. When I was in that car and I was laying over my steering wheel and I was out of my body looking down at my body, I was acutely aware that there's a God in heaven like I had never, I know he's here. Now, this is just a shell. 
It's just a show. And I'm, I've, I've given up everything, all of Jesus. I'll do anything you want me to do, you know? And I've never been in so many battles since I went under this attack. In the last year, I've fought. I haven't fought. I gave it to the Lord. But I've fought condemnation. I've had people that I love the most. The Lord said, I'm cutting them away from you. I'm cutting them away from you. And I was like, I went to a church thinking, I'm going to quit today. And I thought, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the prophetess of God walked up to me in that church. She said, the Lord said, you're not done. And you're not going to die yet. And that he has a plan for you. And he's brought you into a narrow way. And I clung to that sir, that word, a narrow way. Because the Bible says, to go up the mountain of the Lord, there's a narrow path. Narrow is the way, but wide is the path of the Lord. And so whatever you face and whatever you're walking through, it's you got to get the mind of Christ. You've got to stay in your head, stay in the mind. Get your mind on Jesus. Get the mind of Christ. And hold on. We're in a, a tremendous, you know, it's like I see you and you've just been one bump after the other, one canoe ride after the other. But God says, I'm still in the waters and I've changed your life. I've changed your walk and I'm bringing you in here. But the Lord says, you're very good with words. You're very, you, you, can, you can choose wisely to get your way. God says, be wise in what you ask of me, and I will give it to you. Okay? I got a son that's so smart, he could, he could cash my paychecks to any woman that would allow him to at a cashier's register. And I thought, oh, Jesus, hallelujah. So good looking. Such a call on his life. And you all keep him in prayer. Keep my family in prayer. Because the devil's really, been really attacking. But I'm okay. We're okay. Look, I just go around the world, I just preach, jump on planes, went to Oxford, England. Wouldn't you be jealous? That guy was so amazing, this preacher, so amazing. You can watch him, Oxford Bible Church on YouTube. Prophetic, Pro prolific in the end time, powerful. How are you doing over there, Sister Jeans? You? Yes. Who do you belong to in this place? Is that your husband? It is. Are you a husband? Have you been married for like a hundred years? <laughs> One year? You only been married less than a year? My Lord Jesus. My husband's dead and I didn't even kill him. I'm just thankful he's with Jesus. <laughs> when we drove up here, our, our Avery and I were going to go see it. He died in Beckley, Beckley, Virginia, at the Southern School okay. Dam. Broken neck. White water rafting. In 2005. And my daughter dreamed the whole thing the night before that something was going to happen. But he's with Jesus. He's okay. Amen. He, did, he didn't get, he left me the kids and the bills. <laughs> I'm going to give this to you, Pastor. I'm telling you, the hunger of your heart, I know you don't want this to end, but it's your full pony book at me for one meeting. You'll get used to it. <laughs> Y'all talk to pastors. There's no condemnation, but just telling you, you didn't hear all of God. You only heard a part. <laughs> You, you'll be blessed. And we speak to Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to know him. He's amazing. Yeah. He's the greatest journey of your life you'll ever take. He's the lover of your soul. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. He's your peace. Yeah. He's everything you need. Do you hear me over there? I like your little locks, whatever that is. Somebody put a weave in my head and it's falling out and I can't find anybody to fix it. So Jesus, somebody pray for me. I'm telling everything today. It's the truth. I felt like, what in the world? I found out, don't not touch the weed for eight weeks. It'll fall down. My daughter's like, my granddaughter's like, Nani, it's all the way down here. So well, praise God. I still got my halo, my glory. Hallelujah. Here you go, Pastor. We've got more to say, but not tonight. Hallelujah.
When I started the radio show and I talked about Dr. Reddy, what we were going to hear, it'll be recorded. You can go back and find it. For those of you that received a word specifically this morning, you can go back, review, write, pray over it. Ask the Holy Spirit to open and enlighten what you heard this morning. Father, we just praise you. We thank you. I just decree right now that you've been walking under this anointing for years, but an increase of it. An increase in what daddy wants to do in your life. I don't believe you are at full potential. Matter of fact, I know it because that would mean I am limiting God in you too, and I know you are in things. I thank you that you are strong in the Lord, the power of his might. The vigor of the Lord moves through you, surges through you, courses through you, strengthens you, undergirds you in the times when you need undergirding, strengthens you in times of weakness, and just pours out revelation, wisdom, and knowledge onto you right now to overflow capacity that you never run dry. Until either the Lord calls you home or he returns. Safe journeys. We just ask the Lord to dispatch ministering angels along your route. I am expecting for you a time in the Lord on the way home. There will be a degree of, do I really want to go this deep right now? And the Lord says, Holy Spirit will take care of everything surrounding you and around you. Angel in the vehicle will go with you, safeguard you, direct, lead, and guide you all the way home. We open up in the name of Jesus all routes, no hindrances. I decree an expedited journey for you when we depart this way. In Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking up a love offering for Robin. Okay? So if you want to prepare that, go ahead. I am going to receive this morning our offering. Again, a couple things that we had on the board. We will be celebrating first fruits next Sunday with communion, first fruit offering. And we will be doing fellowship lunch, bring your own lunch next week. Okay? Forget that. Also, Sister Sue had discussed uh, an opportunity. I didn't hear everything, so I have to apologize on that. Um, Wednesday, 10 a.m. Uh, women's group, Wednesday, 10 a.m. That's on the Go Highway, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask if you're going to be here when you play on the kitchen. I don't even know where I was. I know that. I know that. Bless God. Patriot. Patriot. You celebrated an anniversary, didn't you? Did you celebrate an anniversary? Um, <laughs> seven, nine. I became a citizen the 20th. Yes. Yeah. So in advance, be blessed. Go up there, Patriot. Go to Massachusetts, Patriot. Well, that's what you think. Look at me, Lord. We say to you, Lord, we thank you for the harvest. And we return to you a portion, Father, and we decree that the portion is blessed, the lump is blessed, and the blessing remains in each and every house here, Lord God. 
as my sister spoke about increasing prosperity this morning. I thank you that it rests on each and every one in this place, those that are viewing online. And it's not necessarily financial. Daddy can get you all the money you need for everything, but what we need is wisdom and revelation now. We need to walk in the counsel of God, and he'll take care of the rest. And we have to position ourselves. So, Father, we just give you a rave offering this morning. We praise you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. And all that agree, say amen. amen. If you would, you may bring your tithes and your offerings forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. It's all the same. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to <clears throat> take up an offering. And, and this is the thing, you know, I didn't quite understand it. Not that I'm old, but I'm younger about the love offerings. I, I really didn't understand tithes and offerings. And listen, guys, I don't teach on tithes and offerings a lot. You know that. Those of you who've been here for a while, I don't beat you over the head for my own stuff. What you are sowing into is revelation, wisdom, and knowledge you receive. That's the purpose of the time. Of you, you're giving into what you receive. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. You're, you're, you're actually taking it and saying, Lord, I thank you for what you've given me today, and, and I want to return a financial portion back to where I received it. In this case, the woman of God who brought the word this morning. So if you want to bless her, make it out to your name. RTRWM. I have a website called RobinTomRogers.com. It's Robin with a Y, Tom with an H, and Rogers with a D. And there's a whole giving thing on there. And then I have Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. But, <laughs> but RTRWM stands for Robin Tom Rogers Worldwide Ministries. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, so into Robert's ministry. And again, you're giving into what was received today. You may do so. I will ask you to bring your offerings up. And I'll set them right here. Okay? Thank you. Picking myself in the rear end right now. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Well, the first time you've been here, and I'm trusting, and I'm, and I'm trusting God. I, I hope it's not the last. Talking, and I don't know what other gentleman went that I met with him. Oh, I think he's counting up. So, what I saw was I saw you, and at one point, you, were, you guys were walking a path that there was it was going two different directions. And then the Lord started bringing this path together. And God says, You're going in one direction now, and you're going up. God says, There's something that's not, you're not plateauing anymore, you're going up, says the Lord. You, you, there's something, it was like I saw a path and one was going this way and one was going that way and you all were doing other things in other words and then all of a sudden the Lord brought it together and now the Lord says you're going up and you were, you know, the Lord has really laid on my heart this week and I haven't studied it yet but the Good Samaritan because you are there to be a helper 
but you're like the good Samaritan that will help people along the way. Okay? And the hand of God's on you, sir. God is, he's got you here as a pillar to stand strong and to preach and to teach. I don't know if you've ever taught or preached, but the hand of God's in you to teach. You've got revelation in you. You've got word in you. I don't know if you've ever done it. Don't let him outshine you. Okay? Because he might have, he might, I used to be like him. I had a cathedral for the Holy Ghost, and now I just have a little temple, and you've got the temple too. He's still got the cathedral, which means he has more anointing than both of us. <laughs> Did you know, I used to tell everybody, because I weighed over 400 pounds, that I had a cathedral for the Holy Ghost. Wow. Now I just have a temple. <laughs> Pastor's got the cathedral now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I'm on men. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, again, I'm, I'm not, guys, I'm not at all wanting to stop, but I want to be sensitive to time also. Well, thank you guys for coming out this morning. I love you. Bless. Father, I give you thanks and praise, and as we depart this place this morning, I thank you for the word that we received and rest upon it. Daddy, I ask that this word so poke at us. What the Holy Spirit spoke to each and every one of us this morning, may it so jealous. And I know the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And when he's wanting to get our full and undivided attention, and listen, he is going to poke and poke and poke, but there will come a time when he doesn't. Let us not ever get to that time. May we move off of the poking, may we receive in the beginning what he wants us to receive in him. And Father, I ask this for each and every one in this ministry, the sound of my voice that is watching now. The vehicles and conveyances will be traveling and touch nothing. We touch nothing in those vehicles and conveyances. They are covered bumper to bumper, side to side, top to bottom. Even while they are parked and parked with us on the inside. As we leave this place today, I thank you that we go in your counsel and with your revelation. We depart this place with the compassion and I send you forth with the compassion and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And know that you walk in resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. It is in you, around you, and flows through you. Now march forward triumphantly in the mighty name.